Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. XRP's holding up pretty well today in the face of a red market. Nothing crazy, but the market has been down today. Worth noting that although, yes, XRP is down, Bitcoin's actually down nearly twice as much as XRP, at least at the moment that I'm recording this, which, by the way, in case anyone's curious, it's 11.30 p.m. Central Time on Wednesday, October 9th, 2024. And um, there's an on-chain analytics firm that says XRP is actually among... Uh, the, the top cryptos in a particular list that has the best chance of rising in price. And the reason that they cite actually might sound counterintuitive on the surface, but it makes all the sense in the world and there's historic precedent to back the claim that the on-chain analytics firm is making. And so there is, there, I mean, I'm just to let you know at the outset, not to scare anybody, <laughs> there are warnings that uh, we could see the market dip at least a bit further. Uh, but, you know, even the analysts that I'm seeing that from, even when they're talking about Bitcoin, which of course leads the market, uh, all of them have the expectation that we are going to see higher numbers. As in Bitcoin, ultimately, this market cycle hitting a new all-time high, entering price discovery, and of course, alts will follow at that point. And I do think we'll see breadth open up uh, in the Russell 2000 as well. But before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, so XRP, as I record this, is at $0.52, cents, Bitcoin at 60904 bucks. Not surprisingly, since the market's a little down, uh, Crypto Fear and Green Index is back in fear. We're at 39 out of 100. Uh, you know, typical living retail speculator flying by the seat of their pants. And I'm telling you, there's such a large quantity of humans that make important financial decisions based on emotionally how they feel, which in the world of crypto, the most volatile asset class in the, <laughs> the entire damn planet, it's going to whipsaw you back and forth consistently for years on end. I just can't imagine living like this, which is why I, I love my strategy, which I think is the best. Uh, it's just, you buy stuff, and then you wait. And that's that. You don't get in and out of, in and out of positions. You don't sell something to, you, to, to go chase something else. You just, you know, if you're me anyway, I'm not, you do whatever you want. I'm not telling you what to do. But uh, if you're me anyway, you just you just hold. You just wait for years on end if that's what it takes. And let time do the heavy lifting. Because if you have a broad, broad exposure to the asset class, your portfolio will be gigantic if you're just sufficiently patient like a proper adult should be. But take a look at this. Man, next, I'm telling you, dude. <laughs> If we're going to have a proper alt season, which I'm confident is most probable, my God, XRP is going to participate, and it is going to shock so many people that have just been crapping all over it because it hasn't been performing and it didn't hit a new all-time high last cycle. Yeah, as if the SEC didn't have something to do with that. But still, here's a post from on-chain analytics firm Santiment, and they wrote, Chainlink, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Solana, and XRP are the assets the crowd has turned the most negative on during this mild crypto slump. Coins with the most bearish crowd narratives historically have the best chance of rising. Here are the 20 best candidates. So I'm not gonna read all 20 on the screen. XRP is number five. So it has, it's among the top five that have the worst sentiment narrative wise in the world of crypto. Now that doesn't mean that it actually has poor opportunity. In fact, when people feel so broken uh, about the performance of a particular particular asset. That's the sentiment that you typically see before there's a notable rebound. And this happening at a time where many are arguing that altcoins are starting to break out here. And fine, maybe there's one more dip to the downside or who knows what. Uh, either, either way, I'm just saying that that's the type of sentiment you should expect to see before it goes. That's why sentiment is saying what they're saying. So on the surface, it's like, oh, it's negative. And if you're brand new to investing, you might think, oh, it's negative. That's scary. Maybe it's just going to keep going that direction. But no, no, no. Eventually, you run out of the lettuce hands. The people with no conviction, the people who whimsically will get in and out of positions, eventually you run out of those people and there's no one left to sell. You know, unless you get a black swan event or something like that, and then you can scare some more people. Fine. Because there's varying degrees of emotional fortitude when it comes to investing in the world of crypto. But this is, it's kind of close to it. That's why they're saying what they're saying, very obviously. So one more thing to consider, but my God, even in the face of what's been happening today, after that terrible news about uh, Ripple getting sued, uh, or, or not sued, but the, uh, you know, the, the SEC uh, pushing forward with that appeal, uh, 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 <laughs> the market doesn't give a damn. Like the market just straight up doesn't care. That news broke. Like it, XRP went down like inside of an hour and a half, 5%. Then the precipitous drop stopped after 90 minutes, folks. That's insane. 
that's better than I had hoped. And then it just moves sideways for much of the next like week. <laughs> like I'll take that. I will absolutely take that. That's as far as I'm concerned, that's a win. And that's why you see all of these chart analysts saying, yeah, XRP, it's been impressive. It hasn't even broken out of the structure that it was in prior to that scary sounding news. The market doesn't care, which is why I keep saying, if you think that XRP will not perform this market cycle because of that news, you are wrong. If XRP doesn't perform, then it is not for that reason. And then we'll have to have our come to Jesus moment and talk. But as long as there's a proper alt season, I think it's completely absurd to think that XRP is not going to participate. Here's a post from Chart Analyst Crypto Insight UK highlighting a couple XRP pairs here and XRP dominance and looking pretty good here on the short term. It just shows the resiliency. And I, I really enjoy highlighting this because I look, I know he's kind of highlighting short term action, but that's exciting because again, what just happened a week ago? It was supposed to be something that's devastating. There were people screaming at me that CXRP is going to miss another bull run. Uh, nope, you were wrong. And I predicted that in the weeks leading up to this, that enough people are aware that XRP has legal clarity. It's not going to change anything. You may have noticed that no exchanges are delisting XRP because that literally would make no sense. And also because, and most people uh, know this now, but even the SEC isn't challenging the legal status of XRP or the ability of XRP to be bought and sold on secondary markets. They're not doing that. They're challenging Ripple's transactions. That's it. And so Crypto Insight UK here showed this market cap. Well, what's uh, he's got a few charts here. Let me start with this one. So we've got, this is an XRP BTC chart. And he wrote, interestingly, as the market pulls back, XRP holds strength slash gains on market share. Well, how about that? So if you're talking about against the dollar, yes, XRP is down, you know, a little over 1%, whatever it is, but it's up against Bitcoin. Look at this. Well, for those of you looking at the screen, you can see where I'm circling right now. Yeah, we, we've been up. Here's XRP against ETH. Same thing because XRP is outperforming and XRP has been outperforming the broader market since June. Uh, and then you have XRP dominance here at 1.43% currently up substantially uh, from where, I mean, it got down to barely above 1% back in June. Now it's at 1.43%. After all of this stuff that just happened. That is resiliency. Then there was this post from chart analyst Stephas Crypto, and he wrote, History appears to be repeating itself for XRP as we see the 2017 through 2018 bull market dynamics unfolding once again. That is true. I'm going to be brief on this point, but I, I just, I wanted to make, I came across this and I was like, yes, exactly. And I want more people to be aware of this. Like, if you think it's weird and it's some sort of like bad omen that XRP has gone so long without hitting a new all-time high. No, that's not, it's, I mean, it's bad in the sense, yes, we wanted our, our moon money, got fine. But the SEC is the culprit here. It's the reason we missed that last market cycle. But there's actually precedent for us going, I mean, XRP specifically, going a really long time before moving to the upside. Do you see that 2017 chart? It's got this red dot here right before it finally made its first major leg up. That was after about five years of existing. It was. It took close to five years for, for XRP to actually find, well, if you're especially in particular if you're talking about when it actually hit its peak, the all-time high, it, it took almost five years. So the fact that we're at seven years, and then you f you factor in that there's only an opportunity for XRP to hit an all-time high at four-year intervals because it's based on global liquidity, and so there's only an opportunity for that uh, every single four every four years, and then we miss the last one. It's not surprising it's been seven years, but to think then that when the market goes, XRP is not going to perform. You're going to be shocked by the time this market cycle is over. Uh, the naysayers they are going to be deleting their posts on X. Just uh, you b I'll just believe that. And so I've got my future dunks tab. Oh, oh, yes, I do. And I've been doing screen recording so that this will be fun, too. I think that uh, some people, I don't know if most will, but some people, uh, I believe, are likely to delete some of their posts. And if they do, I'm going to catch it because I've got videos of my future dunks tab. All the people crapping all over XRP. It's never going to go, blah, 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 blah. And uh, I'm going to compare. I'm, I've, I have the posts. They are record, recorded. I've got them. If they delete them, it doesn't matter. The Internet is forever. And I'm going to highlight this. I'm just saying. Um, so anyway, the fact that we've been waiting seven years, almost seven years anyway, uh, not it, that fact in and of itself doesn't mean that XRP isn't going to go. That's completely ridiculous. There's this post from chart analyst uh, Charting Guy. And uh, of course, since crypto is correlated to the stock market, I want to highlight this. <laughs> it's true. He says, S&P 500 sending at all-time highs. 
Stock market in price discovery. Bears in shambles as predicted. Final bull market top target is the 2.618, and timing should be between February and May, in my opinion. So no, nobody knows for sure when the market's going to top, but um, it, you know, based on historic precedent, it's kind of fun to guess. You know, if somebody makes a firm prediction, I do get nervous for those analysts, but if you're just talking about a window based on historic precedent, I'm like, oh, all right, that's fine. But um, yes, we're talking about the S&P 500 here. I still think you're going to see the small caps open up in terms of breadth, which you have, uh, which has always happened historically if you're going to have an alt season. Uh, but there is historic precedent for it to lag behind. I've showed specific data on that in recent video, or, or, well, recently, uh, in recent months, certainly, uh, at least a few times. So nothing's weird or, or so out there that it, we should be concerned. Uh, the, most of the types of things that we're seeing have happened before. And, you know, history doesn't literally repeat. It just kind of rhymes with itself. And so this was, this is within the realm of what more or less we should be expecting in this type of environment. So that's good. But since these markets move uh, you know, in tandem, broadly speaking, if you're going to see the S&P 500 peak around that time, we he said February to May, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see crypto more or less do the same thing. So, no, it doesn't mean that we can't see alts take off in glorious fashion in Q4. I'm still optimistic for that because there's a historic precedent for that as well. Whether or not October's green, I mean, maybe it will be, maybe it won't be. I'm not going to bother with a prediction, but I just think by the time the year's done, if you look at Q4, my suspicion, and could be wrong, but my suspicion is we're going to look back and be like, yeah, Q4 was awesome. That would be my four fun guess. We'll find out. Uh, then there was this post from uh, Ki Young Ju, and he is the founder and CEO of CryptoQuant and um, put out this chart. It's titled Bitcoin Spent out, uh, Output Age Bands Over Seven Years, Excluding Mt. Gox Outlier. And so you'll see some uh, yellow bars. You'll see some what looks like, I don't know, purplish bars here. And then the gray bar here, is, that's the price. So the yellow, uh, that shows the spent output for Bitcoin uh, after seven years to 10 years. And then the purple one is spent output for 10 years uh, and, and, uh, and above. And so you might be like, spent, what does that mean? So what's that tracking when Bitcoin spent? Are they buying stuff with it? No, no, no that, that is not what they mean. When they, they, they chose to use the word spent, and I've seen this many times, I don't know why that was specifically selected, uh, but I've seen enough charts like this to know that when they write spent, they just mean that Bitcoin after whatever the set period of time is that is cited in the chart, it just means that it moved. So when they say spent output seven to 10 years, they're saying that Bitcoin that had been sitting idle for you know that type period of time, then it moved, so it was it was idle for at least that long, and then the purple same for that period of time. That's all. That's what that means. And so Kiyongju makes a rather salient point here. And check this out. He says ancient Bitcoin whales are still sleeping. Moving Bitcoins dormant for seven plus years has historically triggered market volatility, depending on source and destination. Mount Gox excluded in this chart. If you were an ancient whale, what would you do now? And so it's worth looking at the screen if you're not driving or something like that, because you can see here, look at uh, the 2017, 2018 market cycle. Look at this. Look at where Bitcoin hit its peak for the market cycle and look at how much Bitcoin was spent. Again, just meaning it's being moved. It's, it's, it's no longer dormant. Look at how much was spent right at the top. Look at what the whales did. Then look at last market cycle. Look at what happened here. When do they wake up? The, the, you know, there have been other times where there's kind of some notable jumps to the upside. But in particular, when you have uh, the cycle tops, there that's when they really shine, right? Then look at where we are right now. Look through, look through all of 2023 and 2024. Well, specifically 2024. Almost nothing. Whales haven't done a damn thing. So is this the first cycle? So if it's all over, we're going into bear territory. You're telling me that the whales for the first time in history got wrong footed. I don't buy it. And so he had this post from uh, chart analyst, Dr. Magic. He reposted what I just showed you and he wrote the following worst profit taking for old whales ever. And then he sarcastically says the following. I like this. You shrimps finally did it. You outsmarted them and you dumped your bags on their head at the Pico top. Or did you? Uh, no, you did not. In all probability, you didn't. You didn't outsmart the whales. You did not perform them. Nothing of the sort. We just haven't had the euphoric top for the cycle yet. That's my guess, anyway. You guys are entitled to your opinion. Um, I suspect that most of you are probably going to agree with that. It's pretty clear what Ki Youngju was point was getting at when he posted this. Like, come on, guys. <laughs> 
Um, there's also this post. Somebody named Crypto Panther wrote to chart analyst Credible Crypto and said, Cred, do you think we will bounce? And he's talking about Bitcoin here. Do you think we'll bounce from 58 to 59,000 and have some relief? Or we will follow Green Path to all uh, to end high, uh, he wrote it sloppily, a uh, high 40,000. So he's asking, okay, are we going to have a bounce here if we get down to 58 to 59 thousand uh, dollars, or do we just straight up go all the way down to the upper 40 thousands? And I'll note, and I highlighted this in the recent video, Credible Crypto, and he's uh, one of the only analysts predicting this, he does think that it's reasonably probable, though not certain, that we will see Bitcoin price re enter the upper 40 thousands. Not a guarantee. And most analysts don't think that's going to occur. And I, I'm not going to even predict that, but I don't, know, I don't know if he's right or wrong. But man, his hit rate on short-term price action, I just, he's the best that I'm aware of. So it doesn't mean he's right for sure, but uh, I, I'm paying attention to what he's saying. And so anyway, he answered that. He wrote, right, so this is the big question. Based on everything I am seeing, I think a bounce from fifty-eight to fifty-nine thousand dollars for one more push-up, still under seventy thousand dollars, would make a ton of sense, and this would give us the perfect chance to position across the board too. That being said, it doesn't have to happen, of course, but it's the ideal scenario before the larger drop I'm expecting. And so, to be clear here, he does still think that you're going to see Bitcoin in the upper forty thousands, probably, though not certain. Uh, before we see a continuation to the upside. But he does firmly believe this market cycle, you'll see uh, Bitcoin at six figures. He does believe you'll see XRP over $10. He thinks $10 is pretty conservative. I've seen enough from him to know that. None of that has changed. So I'm just sharing with you perspective from reputable analysts who have a good track record here. And that's what he's warning about. Although for him, it's just opportunity because even though most of what he holds, he's publicly stated, you know, he hodls, he, he's also a trader. And he seems to be doing well at it, but trading's not for most people. Like, I personally have no interest. I don't even want to try it. I don't care. Uh, I, I just, no, no, no. It's just, it's a, it's a time vampire. If you want to actually do it, it's just a time vampire. There's a lot of other stuff you can do with your life. And I'm already going to get, uh, if I'm right about crypto, I'm already going to get the life-changing wealth from crypto. I don't need to get the extra X percent with the trading, even if I'm good at it. If, like, say I were good at it. I don't even know if I'd be good at it. But even if so, I just don't care. I don't want to do it. I don't, I don't need the extra stress and, and, and the extra workload doing that stuff for a tiny percentage of my portfolio. I'm just not going to do it. And to all the people that have success, uh, good. And uh, I'm proud of you. Like, seriously, though, like, I think that's fantastic for those that are good. But just know that somewhere between 90 to 95% of traders lose money. Almost all of them do. And the ones that do eke out of profits, for most of them, it, it's not even necessarily like worth the while. For some, it is. You know, incredible crypto to his credit. He seems to be doing well anyway. Um, but then there's also this post. This is from Charting Guy, and he respectfully disagrees with credible crypto. He said, no offense to cred. I like him a lot. Just a low probability currently, in my opinion. Is it possible? Yes, anything is. Is it likely? In my opinion, no. But that's what we're all here to do. Present our opinions and try to make money. And so we'll see who's right. Credible Crypto says it's probable that we're going to see Bitcoin in the 40,000s again before we move to the upside. And Charting Guy says, yeah, it could happen. Low probability doesn't think it's likely. So we'll see. And again, uh, Charting Guy holds a majority opinion. Credible Crypto holds a minority opinion. Uh, doesn't mean either of them is right or wrong. I'm just presenting some information because I find it fascinating. Especially, again, I'll say it one more time. Credible Crypto has a great hit rate on short-term uh, price action. So we'll find out together. Uh, then Charting Guy also wrote this referencing Bitcoin 58,000 to 61,000 is the sweet spot. So he thinks we, we could go down uh, roughly to that level, which, by the way, again, is it's pretty much what Credible Crypto said, too, before getting some relief. Uh, then there's also this. This is from Chart Analyst Blunts, and he, and he shared a couple charts here. Uh, and it, uh, Without going in, in depth here, just a key takeaway here is he does think that we could go lower. One of the possibilities is... You know, we go down to about $58,000. He thinks we could go maybe a little bit lower, maybe into the mid $50,000. Uh, but ultimately, even if that happens, he, he would agree with every other analyst out there that says, yes, but then you move to the upside. And he's charting here above, you know, $84,000 for Bitcoin. Uh, then there was this post from chart analyst Dom. He said, Bitcoin, Coinbase sellers were not to be faded at $64,000. Now they are buying. Scary spot overall, but sixty to sixty-one thousand dollars should produce a bounce. Let's see if they are right. Okay, so he's not citing the same level of fifty-eight thousand dollars, but roughly where we are now, he thinks that it's low enough that we we get a bounce. So, 
whether he's right as, as to where the local bottom would be or someone like Credible Crypto or Charting Guy that says maybe it's more like 58,000. Either way, uh, many analysts here agree that we're probably going to get at a minimum some short-term relief. Uh, and then we also had this from Chart Analyst Crypto Michael. And he wrote, uh, because actually, let me show you this one first. So, um, and I may have shared this in a previous video. This is from October 7th. He shared this Bitcoin chart where he was warning, hey, uh, looks like Bitcoin could go down to maybe closer to 60 to $61,000. That's what the chart was indicating anyway. He simply wrote Bitcoin. And then he had this update where he reposted that and said, Bit Bitcoin short target hit, thanks for playing. So that is what he saw in the charts. That's what he thought was probable. Um, now that doesn't change on a higher time frame, long term, what happens uh, for the rest of this, you know, this market cycle. Um, but, but all that to say, that's why I wanted to, I like to highlight this stuff because, you know, if you treat each chart analyst as the, as an individual data point, and if you follow reputable chart analysts who, no, none of them are perfect, but if they have reputable enough records, and then you can just kind of see what's the group wisdom if you're tracking the right people. And what I find is if there's a notable amount of them that think something's going to happen, usually they are correct, at least with the, the sample of chart analysts that I follow. Um, and sometimes they're not because sometimes the improbable happens, but most of the time, yeah, if, if most of them, if most of them think something's going to happen, then most of the time they are correct. That's what I'm saying. So that's why it's interesting and useful to follow them. And so I've been tracking a lot of these analysts, uh, some of them for literally over half a decade at this point, uh, most of them less than that. Uh, but you, you know, I, you just come across new talented individuals over time. But uh, so take it for what it's worth. Nobody, nobody knows for sure. You know, even the best chart analyst on the, in the world doesn't know. But my God, the opportunity ahead. This is such an exciting time to be an XRP holder and to be in crypto. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.